Well, good morning. Praise good morning. the Lord. God is good. And shalom. I say that because that's a Jewish word for peace. I want you all to have peace. I definitely want you to have some peace. Um, I have a question to ask. Anybody been bothered by the enemy this week? Ooh. <laughs> I don't even know I don't got hands. I got somebody standing up. See, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of it. I'm sick and tired of the enemy messing with God's people. I'm tired of him deceiving. I'm tired of him putting out blocks. I'm tired of him picking tricks. I'm tired of him doing the things he thinks he can do and get away with messing with God's people. Are you tired of that? Tired of it. Are you really tired of it? Yes. I'm serious. Are you really, truly tired of the devil messing with you? Yes. So guess what? <laughs> this means war. Amen. This means war. It is time to fight back hard and strong. Time to not let the enemy mess with us no more. I know I'm tired of it. This year he's been attacking me more than I think I've been attacked in a long time. And I'm sick and tired of it. See, one of the problems that we do is we run from the devil. It's time to stop running from him and declaring war against him and going out and fighting on his turf. Tired of him coming on my turf. Tired of him knocking on my door. It's time for us to be strong, to be courageous, and to fight the enemy on his turf. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Isaiah 59, 16 through 19. Since he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor, therefore his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay. Fury to his adversaries. That sounds like he is mad. Recompense to his enemies. The coastlines he will fully repay. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood. When the enemy comes in like a flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Has the enemy come in like a flood on any of you? Anybody ever really seen the devastation that happens in a flood? Yes. <laughs> Water, they say, is one of the most powerful forces on the earth. We know fire is a big force, but water, that is how the Grand Canyons were formed. Mm -hmm. Wasn't because of fire, it was because of flood. Because of water, it just creeped its way through, carving out rock, moving out dirt. See, that's what the enemy wants to do to us. He comes in like a flood. He doesn't come in sneaky. Doesn't come in quiet. Sometimes he comes in bearing down all forces, hard and heavy, and he'll trip you up because you are not looking for a flood. Amen. Michelle and I, we went to a movie yesterday. Wonderful movie, by the way. I thought it was just one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Hidden Figures. If you haven't seen it, you need to go see that movie. Awesome movie. But to digress from that, I think there was, there was showing a lot of different um, previews. And one of the previews, they had a, I don't even remember what the, 
I think it, I think it was uh, one of the movies. You had a monster, little horns, looked like a demonic force. And we were one of the things Michelle said, it looks like a demon. I said, no, it don't. So demons don't want to, don't want to look like horns, Amen. all breath smelly. See, if you can see that coming, you want to avoid that. Right. You want to squash that like a bug. He looks just like you and me. Slick, cunning, sly, trickery. He is busy to win every soul he can into his camp. And we as children of God, we have to be prepared for every trick, every sly movement, everything he uses to try to get us on his side. We got to be wise. We got to be prepared. It's time for war. Amen. It's not time. To, see, the Bible says there's, there's, there's a time for everything under the sun. And there is. There's a time for peace. There's, our country needs some peace about right now. Yes. But we're not talking about the country. We're talking about your very existence as a child of God fighting the fight of faith in a spiritual war. It's time for war. It's time for you to take charge of your destiny in God and fight the enemy on every possible plane that you can find him on. Now according to Matthew Henry's commentary, it says when, about that scripture, it says when the enemy threatens to bear down all without control, the Spirit of the Lord shall stop him, put him to flight. He that has delivered, he will still deliver. See, we kind of forget sometimes that God's brought us out of something, and then we go into something else, and we kind of forget that God has been there before us in the past, so we start to worry. Maybe because he's not moving as fast as we want him to move. Or we're going into something, and we don't want to go into something. God dropped this on me this morning. The reason why I'm even here, the reason why I'm even preaching to you is I got three reasons. There's three reasons why I preach on Sunday morning. Number one, first reason, is to help you to understand what you have been through. See, a lot of times we don't, we don't understand why things have happened to us. And the word of God that gives to you from me, through me, is to help you to understand some of the things you have been through. Number two reasons to help you to go through what you're going through. Because all of us is going through something. Amen. Right here, right now. Because the enemy's not letting up. Number third reason is to prepare you for what you're about to go through. Because it's coming. I'm not trying to bum nobody out. I'm trying to prepare you how to be victorious and live a life where you don't have to worry about a thing because you've been given everything you need to be victorious over every situation and every circumstance. Amen. And understand that the things that you've been through are to help make you strong. The things you're going through are to help not only you to do something, but to let other people see how God's glory can help you to go through it in the midst of it. That's why we do what we do. That's what this is all about. It, hey, it's time for war. Amen. I ain't talking about peace. I'm talking about war. Leviticus 26, verse 8 of the Living Bible says, Five of you will chase a hundred. I like what that says. <laughs> Didn't say you'll sit back and wait for them to come to you. It says you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you, ten thousand, you will defeat all of your enemies. See, what you got to realize is what are your enemies? Who are your enemies? It's not your brother, it's not your sister, it's not your wife, it's not your husband, it ain't your kids, it ain't your boss, it ain't your co-workers, it's the spirit. We got to start knowing that when we're fighting in the spiritual realm, we can't use this. Amen. Because this don't work. You can't use this. This don't always work. Unless you're using the right thing with this. So we need to run a rabbit trail. We talked about lifting up a standard. Strong's Hebrews lexicon says a standard is something that is lifted up 
a banner, a sign, or a signal. I love that. See, we have to be looking for certain things. Even in the midst of when the enemy's trying to bear down hard on us. We have to look at certain things that enable us to be able to see why the enemy's doing it and what he's using. See, there's so many different types of spirits that are out there that's trying its best to destroy you. You gotta put a name to it so you can put it under the name of Jesus, which is where the power lies. So we think because somebody's talking about us, we wanna jump on them. No. That's number one, a spirit of distraction. It's trying to distract you from the real purpose of who and what is trying to mess with you. Or that spirit of gossip. Somebody's talking about me. It ain't about that. That spirit's trying to utilize any button he can push because he knows how it gets to you. And what it will take to bother you. What it will take to change your mind off of God and put it on a certain situation. you got to be prepared to look at the things that are coming. Exodus 17 verses 8 through 13. I want somebody else to read this for me. While the people of Israel were still at Rephilidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us tomorrow. I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses and Aaron and Hur climbed to the top of the nearby hill. As long as Moses held the staff in his hands, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained the advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired, he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands. So his hands held steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. See, this is a true sign of what's called intercession. Yep. See, there are times when you're too weak to battle. That's why we're praying for each and every one of you all. Because when you can't pray, we pray. And I hope that you're doing the same thing for us. Because there's times when we have a hard time praying. And I'm hoping somebody's praying for us. Amen. See, we're our brother's keeper. We have to intercede for one another. See, all the time that Moses was holding up his hands, holding up that rod, Israelites was just jamming. They was beating up, killing everything in sight. But sometimes you get tired, hallelujah. Sometimes you get tired. Sometimes you get tired. We have to raised, let his hands down. The Amalekites would start to get fierce. And they'd start to overwhelm Israel. he put them back up, Israelites start to win. See, sometimes you can only hold so long. You need the help of somebody else. You need somebody else to be able to see what you're going through. You can't keep it to yourself. You're not living on an island. You got to ask somebody for some help. So here comes Joshua. And here comes Aaron and her. They come and they took a stone and they set it down on the ground and had Moses sit on the ground, sit on the stone. One took one arm, one took the other arm, held it up so that they could go ahead and do the whole war and they could defeat. Sometimes you need somebody to hold up your arms. Amen. Sometimes you need somebody to pray for you. Sometimes you need somebody to talk to. Somebody that can help you. The Bible says in Revelation that we overcome him, the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. I need to hear what God has done for you. I need to hear how God has blessed you. I need to hear how God has healed you. If he's done it for you, hallelujah, he'll do it for me. Amen, yes. If he's done it for me, I guarantee you he'll do it for you. So who are our enemies? I was a Mad Magazine fan. 
as you can tell. <laughs> Those of you that don't know that, never seen that spy versus spy. So you got one in black, you got one in white. Everybody always know you got one in white, that's supposed to be good, right? Not in this case. They both bad. See, that's how the enemy wants to do you. Sometimes you'll see him coming. You'll see him just as fierce and just as ugly and just as riled up. But then there's those times when he looks just as peaceful and calm. Dressed all nice and good. Smelling good. Saying the right thing to say. Whispering in your ear. Oh, it's all right, baby. Before you know it, he's crept in. And he's caused damage on the inside. You gotta know who your enemy is. See, Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. You can't use this. That's not where our war is. That's not where our struggle is. But it's against rulers. It's against the authorities. Against the powers of this dark world. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. That's who we are to be fighting. The devil. The demonic forces. Those that are causing harm and havoc. Utilizing people, flesh and blood to do the things that they do. In order to cause hurt, harm and danger to all of God's people. See, there's a movie called Braveheart. Those of you that know me, you know I love a good war movie. I love a good war movie. Some from Michelle, she kind of gets on because sometimes the bloodier the better. Mm. Yeah, I have a morbid side. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. I love a good bloody movie. But one of the things that I loved about this movie, Braveheart, was you had the king and his army. They were all up on a hill with all of their men of battle. And they used banners in order to direct and determine how they were to advance in battle. See, they would use a flag that had arrows on it for the archers. Whenever he, they raised up that flag, all of the archers would let go. You see arrows flying and hitting its target, men falling. They weren't even up on it. Then they would use a flag that had horses on it. That was for the cavalry. That meant all of those men that were on horses, it's time for you to charge, get to ride. Come on in the battle. And they were just bearing down. Lastly, he had one that had axes and swords. That was for the infantrymen. infantrymen. He would raise that, and all the guys that had swords and axes, you saw them start charging. <clears throat> bearing down. Hit the battle. Bam! That is what God wants you to understand is that sometimes he's got signs for you. What banners do you use to defeat your enemy? This is not rhetorical. Almost about to answer me. What, what banner did Jesus use when he was in the wilderness? The word of God. Say it. The word of God. The word of God. Every time the enemy tried to trick him up, what did he say? It is written. It is written. Oh, y'all got to talk louder than that. It is written. It is written. He used the word of God. He used scripture. So guess what you got to use? These are the banners that you need to use against the enemy when he starts to do these things to you. When you have sickness found in Exodus 15, 26, he said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Found in Isaiah 53, 5. By his stripes we are healed. You need to use this. I don't care how sick you are. I don't care the report of what the doctor says. I don't care how, how high your temperature goes. This is what you need to use. This is the banner for your sickness. Amen. What is the banner for your fear? 2 Corinthians, 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I don't have to be afraid of nothing. Amen. See, that's the problem. We're afraid of the enemy. As long as he's not messing with us, we're okay. As long as he's not bothering us, as long as he's not trying to trick us up, we're okay. We're afraid when he starts doing something to us. 
And I'm trying to tell you, it's time for you to not even wait till he does something to you. It's time for you to jump on him. Every time you wake up, he ought to be afraid of you. He ought to say, oh, no. Victor woke up this morning. Man, I'm going to have a bad day. Amen. That's what the enemy ought to say about you. Instead of you saying, Lord, oh, God, I'm going to work He's going to mess with me and I need your help. It's time for you to turn them tricks around. You have the power. God has given you every tool you need in order to not be afraid. These are banners. You need to fly every time one of these things happen to you. Talk about your finances. Oh, man, that's a big one. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. God has already told you you're supposed to be prosperous. You're not supposed to be robbing Peter to pay Paul. You're not supposed to be worrying about where your next meal's coming from, child of God. That's to be left to those that don't know God. Because he's established this. He's even established it with those that's come before you. You're supposed to know that it is God. When you acknowledge him, he's the one that gives you what you need. He's the one that meets every one of your needs. He's the one that sees that you go without wanting. David said the best, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. 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 Don't let your finances go by without raising up that banner. Put the word of God on it and watch God do the trick for you. Faith. Mark 11, 22 to 23. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Oh, those those, those have four words are just enough right there to help you to go, whoa. Have faith, have faith in God. Don't have faith in yourself. Don't have faith in your company that you work for. Well, you know, they're supposed to give me a raise and I, 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 I know I've got a job com uh, uh, performance coming up or, you know, I've, I've applied for this, this position and I know I'm supposed to get it. You don't have faith in that. He's telling you, have faith in God. He says, for surely I say to you, whatever or whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Listen, child of God. I told you before, this right here. Sometimes it won't do you no good if you find the enemy unless you know what to say. He's telling you here, use this to say to your problem. Say to that that's standing in your way. Say to that that is trying to keep you from achieving the things God has for you. Be removed. But you can't say that if you don't have faith in God. Come on now. Man. See, that's the precursor. You've got to have faith in God. Once you do that, you can, you can, there's not a problem in the world that cannot be removed out of your sphere of influence. Not a situation that cannot be turned to your good. Not a problem that cannot be overturned. And God get the glory because of it. When you have faith in God. And courage. Psalms 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. We want to put everything out of its sequence. God's not moving fast enough. I need this right now. Honey, don't you know God has already seen what you had need of before you even thought that you needed something? Don't you think he's already seen the outcome of what is supposed to be your blessing before you even start to go into a situation that you need a blessing? So he's telling you, you need to wait on him. If you've given it to him, give it to him. If you've prayed about it, let God handle it. But you got to wait on him and you got to have the courage enough to say, Lord, I'm trusting you. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I have faith in you. Father, I know you're going to take care of this. And all due time, your time, not my time. And that's hard to do. I'm not telling you that's something easy to do. But you got to work on this. These are daily 
issues because every day the enemy's throwing something at you. Some things are seen, some things are invisible. But I guarantee you, he's throwing something at you every single day. Amen. I want you to know something about the earth, and I, I, I found this very interesting. The earth, our earth is being bombarded every moment by things that cannot be seen. Ultraviolet rays. There are x-rays. There are meteorites. There are things that are hitting the earth you can't see. But it's being attacked every moment. I find that so interesting. We're living in such a comfortable world. Not knowing that if you really go out into space and you can really see all the stuff that's happening to this earth, you'd be in shock. You'd be in fear. You wouldn't want to be on this rock called Earth because you can see it. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. This is what the enemy's trying to do to you. Every moment of every day, child of God, he's trying to do things to you to turn you around. And you need to throw up these signs, throw up these banners, put it on the enemy so that he doesn't have a chance to win over you. When you're dealing with loneliness, Hebrews 13 verse 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I've heard this too many times from believers. God is not with me no more. Well, I can't hear the Lord anymore. Well, I don't think he loves me no more. God's not with me. He said in his word, I will never leave you. Is he a liar? No. Mm -mm. If he's not a liar, then he's with you. Amen. Is he a liar? No. Then he will never forsake you. He won't turn his back on you. The problem is, is we turn our back on God. And then we have the nerve to say he don't love me. <laughs> Do you love him? Enough to trust him. You have to know that you don't have to worry about being lonely because he's with you. He's got your best interest at heart. Lastly, if you need some peace, he's trying to rob you of your peace. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So it's one thing to have peace, another thing to have perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Perfect peace means no matter what happens, no matter how bad it seems, you can sit back like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I'm loving this. Everything around you, bombs is going off, bullets is flying. Talk figuratively, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> And if it's literal, you better duck. <laughs> but I'm talking about when all turmoil and trouble is happening in your life, he wants to give you perfect peace if you keep your mind on him. Peter had to experience this at one time. They were out in the boat. Storm rose. Jesus wasn't in the boat. But Jesus could see that they were all in peril. Didn't know what to do. Here comes Jesus walking on the water. They thought he was a ghost. They couldn't imagine that here is the supernatural happening right in front of us, and we still about to die. Peter, the only one, I said, hey, if it's you, ask me to come out to you. I'm going to put you to the test, Lord. What did Jesus say? Come on. You bad. Peter got off the boat, started walking on the water, doing the supernatural, but cannot be done according to the laws of physics. You cannot walk on water. Mm -hmm. Peter did it. But just like everything else, when the enemy sees you striving, doing the supernatural, or doing the things that God has you do, he's going to turn up the floor show. I could see the lightning really started to flash then, and the waves started to really crash big and hard. And what did Peter do? He took his eyes off of Jesus. He started looking at the situation. 
Jesus. Started to sink. But that's not a picture of what we do. When we're in the middle of watching God bless us, and then we take our eyes off of him. Amen. We start paying attention to the situations around us. Mm -hmm. We allow those situations to begin to permeate our faith, permeate our trust, cause us to begin to sink. Well, until Jesus reached out his hand, Peter took that hand, looked back on Jesus. Could he get back up? The only man who ever walked on water twice. Mm -hmm. I thought it was awesome. Amen. Jesus has always desired that we be people of influence. We have to influence others. We have to be the ones who change the minds and the thoughts of others. See, to influence is to the act or power of producing an effect without showing force or direct exercise of a command. When you really have that power, really have the ability to influence others, Talking about trying to reach others for the Lord. You don't have to walk around with a coffee table Bible or a cross that goes from your neck down to your knees for people to see and know you're a Christian. You have to be able to let the Spirit of God that is within you start to shine. And you can influence people that would normally not know nothing about God. And you have the ability to do that. Some of those examples are having a calm demeanor and everybody else is totally upset. And you're the one that's the catalyst of causing peace in those situations. You have a warm smile and a gentle greeting when there's visible sorrow going on in people's lives. I've, we've run into uh, a lot of people who have lost someone this year. And you have to be able to give comfort not even if somebody's just lost. You have people that are just in bad situations. You have to be the one that helps meet their need. Or you're being prayer prayerful and upright when everything else is evil. In other words, affecting the outcome of a situation merely by the attitude that you portray. The Christian influence is one filled with love, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Those, you, 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 you Bible scholars, does that sound like anything, right? What's that sound like? The fruits of the Spirit. This is what is produced by the Spirit of God in you. And this is what you are supposed to give to the world. You're supposed to live this way so that others can see the difference between you and everybody else. We were watching some of the uh, demonstrations that's been going on. Uh, <laughs> and I found it very interesting that uh, this, my wife is a YouTube junkie. She is a YouTube junkie. She finds most stuff on YouTube. So she had me sit down. We were watching some of the the women's march. And, uh, marches that people have been doing ever since the election. And, uh, it's been interesting that uh, you have some who have something meaningful to say, but then you have a whole lot of folk that just want to talk. Yeah. And I have a saying that I say, and I hope that you uh, take this and utilize this when you need to. There are some people that have something to say, but then there are some people who just got to say something. Say something. Mm -hmm. Amen. Nothing useful. They just want to talk. They just want to yap, 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 and they ain't got nothing good to say. You got to know the difference. As a Christian, as a person of influence, the things you say have got to build up. They cannot tear down. Amen. What you've got to say is supposed to influence a person to look to God and not look to man. Because man can't solve your problems. Amen. Only God can. Amen. And he's the one who wants to be able to see you through. See, 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, verse, uh, third chapter, verse 2. And as it's Paul is saying that we are written epistles, we are read of men, meaning you're somebody's Bible. Somebody may never pick up a Bible. They've never heard about Peter, don't know nothing about Paul, don't know nothing about Moses or Joseph, but they know you. When 
you're a living Bible. You're the type of person that's supposed to give God's word away. See, Jesus did not preach the New Testament. He was the New Testament. Amen. Words he pro preached, they are put in the New Testament. People need to read you. People need to hear your voice. They need to know you love them. You pray for them. Even your enemies, even your enemies, even your enemies, you got to pray for them. You have to want to see them prosperous. Those that hate you, can't stand you, don't want to be around you. You got to love them enough to pray that God changes their heart, not do something bad to them. You don't want retaliation, you want salvation. Amen. Big difference. You have to totally be dependent on God. That's a hard thing to say, but we're talking about an awesome God. You're totally dependent on Him. Your faith and your trust in Him will guide you to where you need to go, to who you need to talk to. You have to submit to the authority of God. God is the one in control. God is the one that's building the house. You don't do that. That's Him. And when you have the ability to let that happen, then God has the ability to help you to help others <laughs> as well as to help yourself. In any war, the enemy will send in spies. Spies are meant to learn your language. They learn your lifestyles. They learn your mannerisms. And they learn your living habits. And once they do that, they can infiltrate your ranks and begin to destroy you from within. So you got to be very careful of who you even let in your sphere of influence. There are those spirits who have no other design but to destroy you. And they'll come in looking like anybody else. They're spies. Spies don't look like what we saw before. Black cloak, carrying a bomb. They look like you and me. And their whole design is to win. Matthew 7 and 15 in the New King James says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. There are those who come speaking all kind of good stuff, telling you all kinds of good stuff, telling you what you have, what you can't have. Michelle and I, <laughs> at one time, <clears throat> at one time we tried every, well not every, we tried quite a few get rich quick schemes. Amway. You know, and now there's no such thing as get rich quick. No. Some of these things that you do, you can make a lot of money, but you got to put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you got to put in a lot of your money. But see, the way it's gift wrapped to you, you too can own a yacht. You too can own a $50 million mansion. You too can have a jet to fly around the world. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's how he wants to do you. He'll come in, he'll listen to you, he'll, he'll say something real sweet to you, make you think everything is cool. He wants, to, he'll, he'll, he wants to know your language so he can talk to you in that way. He wants to know exactly how you act, what tickles your fancy. But inside, he's a ravenous wolf. He can't wait for you to let down your guard so he can destroy you. And then John 10, 4 through 5, since after he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them. And they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they know his voice. See, Jesus is saying, follow me. When he says that, you know his voice, you can follow him. Stranger, don't follow him. Listen very carefully to what is being spoken to you. What's being spoken over your life. You ought not let just anybody lay their hands on you and give you a promise. That's right. That's right. I'm very serious. Yes. I'm very careful. 
If I'm going to speak something to you, first thing i got to say is, Lord, you really want me to say that? And then I'm going to go, Lord, if I say it, you know i got to be responsible for following up on it. And then lastly, it's like, Lord, if I say it and it ain't right, you're going to get me. I ain't worried about them. I want the Lord to say, well done. Amen. So trust me. If I put my hands on you and give you a prophecy, you better believe it's the Lord. Because I ain't worried about you. I'm worried about him. Amen. Amen. And I ain't trying to do nothing that's going to cause God to be mad at me. Amen. 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 We must be ready, willing, and able to fight the enemy anytime, any place, and anywhere. I'm serious. It's time to be on guard. It's time to really watch out for him. It's time for us to be prepared on every single level, knowing that he is the one that's coming after us. The enemy's coming after us. We can't afford to be relaxed and wait for him to have. We have to do some charging. We got to do just like the Israelites did when Moses raised up his hands with the rod. It's time for us to charge against the enemy. Be an influence. Affect the lives of unbelievers. Be fishers of men. Never give up. Never surrender. Don't stop this fight. Why? Because this means war. Amen. We're fighting this fight. I ain't stopping. I don't care what he's trying to do. He's not going to win. Amen. He's been doing so and all kinds of things at Michelle and I. Guess what? We're still here. We're going to be here. We're going to throw out everything we can at him. We're going to defeat him on every level that he tries. And we're going to help you to be a victorious believer in every aspect of your life. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you are blessed by it. That it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God. That you continue to fight a good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to this page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request, and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you again, and God bless you.